So yesterday, the folks over at Elemental reached out to myself and several other content creators, giving us access or early access to Elemental AI and all the features that's bringing with it right now. Now, this is probably going to be prone to change as things move forward, but I'm going to kind of take a first look, give you my thoughts and opinions on what's on offer right now. Please do bear in mind that this is an early version of things. But as always, let me have your thoughts on using AI and a tool like Elemental in general in the comment section down below because I'd love to get your feedback and hopefully those folks over at Elemental will be checking out the comments and taking your feedback on board as well as mine. So let's take a very quick look at how this all works. So I've got a basic template as part of Elemental install. We can use this as the basis. So let's go ahead and take a look at its really simple integration. Let's choose this heading, for example. And if we come over now onto the left-hand side where all our settings are, you'll notice in various different places we'll have this new Write With AI feature. So we've got this for the title in this example. If we hop over to Advanced, for example, and we come down to Custom CSS, you'll see again we have that code with AI in this example, but it's effectively the same thing. Let's start off with a really simple example. We'll click the right with AI button and we get this new modal window. You're going to see this or a very similar modal window in various different instances when you use the various different AI features. So you'll see we've got this entry which shows us exactly what's written in this particular box. You can see there's our plans for every team. Let's go ahead and click on new prompt. This will then switch things over to a prompt version. So let's go and type in a very simple prompt and use that as an example. So we'll say generate text. That's what I'm going to connect up and use the AI. And you can see this gives us Web Host Pro, affordable and reliable website hosting for all your needs. Well, let's get rid of the name at the beginning of it. And we could say, let's use that text. But you also notice that we get these additional options underneath. So simplify language, make it longer, shorter, and fix any spelling and grammar. So let's say we want to simplify the language. You can see this now simplifies things. If you want to make it longer, it makes it considerably longer. So we now have four paragraphs worth. And let's try and make it shorter and we now get a shorter version of it. So you could use this as a kind of starting prompt and you can use these options to kind of propel whether you want things to be longer, shorter, whatever you want. But this kind of leads me on to the first thing that I think is a little bit limiting on what we have with this AI feature. Great if you want to use it for a kind of one shot and a very quick tweak kind of thing. However, it's not generative like we've seen with tools like ChatGPT. We can't now go ahead and give it a second prompt and it'll remember what we've done in the first prompt and the content is generated. It's a case of this is what you get. These are the options you have to expand it, make it shorter or just to simplify it. And that's basically it. So I don't think this is going to compete with a tool like ChatGPT in this example. But if you want this to kind of just be a great starting point or to reword something, it's OK. It does the job. For example, if we copy this and we'll just cut that out of there, we'll create a new prompt and we're going to change this. I'm going to say rewrite and make simpler as an example, and we'll just paste in that content. So this is kind of how you may use something like ChatGPT to rewrite content and then it kind of comes out with this. So personally, it's okay. It's all right if you want this as a starting point or you want this to kind of just put some content in so we don't have sort of just like your Laura Mipsum text if you're prototyping for a client or you just want some inspiration and then you modify it. This may be a good starting point. You can also come in and change the tone of this. So at the moment, this is the sort of default tone, but let's just say we wanted to make this playful. Well, we can just select that tone and then it'll go ahead, rewrite it in that specific tone. So you can see now this changes the whole tone of what you've actually generated. And again, we can simplify the language, make it shorter. So you can see we can combine these various different options and we can even translate it into a range of different languages. So for example, let's say we want this in Greek. And we now have a Greek version of that. I don't know if that's actually any good, whether it's right or wrong, because my Greek is non-existent. But you kind of see where this is going. So it could be useful if you don't want to rely upon some of the sort of Google services like the Google Translate and so on. So there's the sort of first thing we can see with it. It is kind of useful in limited use cases. 
But you will notice at the top we have this upgrade and it says upgrade to Elemental AI. If we click on that, that'll take us over to a new tab and it gives us a kind of coming soon landing page because obviously this is still a beta version. So I think it's relatively safe to say there is going to be a cost on this. I'm just you know assuming this, but I can't imagine this would be completely free because if you want to use something like ChatGPT or, you know, sort of like uh, Leonardo.ai for image generation and so on, there's a cost if you want to go beyond the basics on there. So we'll have to see. But my gut feeling is I think this is going to be a paid for service, especially if you want to use it more than just some simple basic options. OK, so that's interesting enough. Let's go ahead and close that down. So we've seen we could use that to kind of create our text. Let's go over now into something like advanced and come into our CSS. And we've got the same option here for code with AI. So this is more of a code orientated version. So let's expand this out a little bit. So we've got a bit more space to play around with. Let's go and code with AI. So now you can see you get a very similar kind of modal, but obviously this is now geared towards coding sides of things. So let's do something really simple. I say something really simple, something you could do just by editing the content anyway, but let's say generate the code and see what it comes back with. And there's the code that is generated. And if we take a quick look at this, it's a very simple example, but you can see it tells us the select the H1, it's going to change the color to red, it's got a transition, so it's taking on board the fact I said I want this to kind of like smoothly transition, as it were, and then it changes the color on hover. So let's insert that, drops the code in for us, and let's just go ahead and save this and go ahead and publish it, and we'll preview. And it's kind of done some of it. You can see it hasn't changed the color to red, so it's not overriding anything. It's basic at best to start off with. If we take a look at the CSS, you can kind of see what's going on. It's telling it to change color, but it's not taking precedence. So any CSS that we've got set up as part of using Elementor seems to be taking precedence. So if we wanted to override that, we'd need to go ahead, modify the code a little bit and drop in important. However, if we knew that, we'd probably just be able to write the code ourselves. So you know, you kind of get the idea. One of the things that I'm not 100% kind of like sold on, let's go ahead now and just change something else inside here. So it doesn't pick up the code that we've created. It doesn't notice that there's code already in this area. So let's just do something again. So let's just say, change the text to red on hover, generate our code, and let's go ahead and insert this. Now you can see what happens is it just tags that onto kind of what's there, but it changes the selector this time. So we've got selector H1, so it's not referencing just this instance. However, underneath you can see this is now targeting element or heading title on hover. So there's a bit of a confusion, plus the fact you can see this just tags this onto any CSS that may be in there. So that's good if you're writing your own CSS, but not so good if you're using something like this to generate that code for you, and then you kind of want it to know what to do with what's already there. So if you're experimenting, you may not know what to get rid of. So this is where I say anything to do with generating code in any kind of AI tool, and this isn't limited to Elemental. I said the same thing with Code WP, another video that I covered recently, link in the description, that you do need to understand the code that's being generated to be able to get a good feeling for if the code is correct, if it's not correct, how to fault find it, you kind of get the idea of where I'm coming from. We know this is only how stupid AI is going to be right now. Every day moving forward, that AI is going to get more intelligent until it takes over the world, eradicates humanity, and we don't need websites at all because, well, you know, they can read code themselves. But this is a interesting starting point. So let's clear that out from there. So let's say you wanted to insert some HTML code. Well, you could come over into the add elements. We'll search for HTML. We'll add that into our design. We'll just pop that in there. It doesn't really matter where. And now you can see we've got the AI option for code with AI. And this type is going to be for the HTML, not CSS. And you can see it gives us some starting points. So you can say write an embed code for Google Analytics, for Facebook Pixel. Let's just try this write an embed code for Google Analytics. Generate the code. And there we go. You can see this is now generated code. It tells us we need to insert our own custom ID inside there. But again, you do need to understand. But it is nice they give you these little notes underneath, tells you what you need to do. So there's a little bit of a prompt, a little bit of help there. So that's kind of interesting. And then you can go ahead, insert that when you're ready. And that will then insert that via the HTML code entry. So that's the kind of basics of this side of things. And this is where we are right now at the kind of time of releasing this video. But we also, at some point, we will have the ability to use the AI with images. Let's grab an image and just drop that 
in our design, looks terrible, but you'll see that we've got coming soon. So this is going to be something we will be able to use AI with in the future. So it'll be interesting to see what service they use. If it's DALI, it's not going to be that great because I find the results from DALI are not brilliant. If it's going to be something like Leonardo AI or it's going to be used in something like Mid Journey, we do get better results, especially like with Mid Journey 5 that's come out recently. Again, this is another AI service that is growing exponentially, getting better and better with each revision and iteration. So I can see a benefit for definite when it comes to the image side of things and also to a lesser extent with the content side of things. But with the code side of things, I think it could be useful for bug sort of like finding bugs and things like that. Maybe you're using it in addition to your skills and knowledge of working with CSS, HTML, JavaScript, PHP, anything like that you might be coding inside you. But I do think there are better services out there. And this kind of leads me on to my final conclusion with not specifically Elementor, including AI, but kind of any page builder. I do wonder if this is more of a gimmick and a kind of rush to market as opposed to it being the right solution for creators, you know, web designers and so on. Yes, it's got its place in some instances, prototyping and so on, rewriting content. But I think for the AI side of things inside Elemental, it needs to be generative. We need to have that ability to craft our content in the same way that we can do with something like ChatGPT. So it would be nice to see that in the future prior to this being finally released. But I'm kind of torn on this. I think in some instances, there's benefits, there's uses, and in other instances, it kind of feels just a bit of a gimmick. We need to get AI in there because AI is the buzzword across the board. And like I say, is not specific to Elementor. This is where you've got tools that integrate AI, page builders, you know, all those things for the sake of including AI. So let me have your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. And as this matures and as it kind of moves forward, I'll come back and revisit it and see what changes have happened. And if it kind of moves forward and gets better and better with the kind of versions of AI that are coming out in the near future and moving beyond that. As always, I welcome your feedback. All the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.